Okay, so welcome everyone to this week's uh, One World IMP Mathematical Physics Seminar. Uh, before we start, I have some announcements. So uh, we have a pleasure to welcome a new member of the organizing committee. Uh, Marcello Porta, unfortunately, had to leave our team, but we thank Marcello for uh, the great work that he has done on this seminar. It was a pleasure to work with him. And now uh, let's welcome Margarita Dissertori, who is our new uh, committee member. Uh, so now the committee members are uh, Hal Tasaki, Ian Justin, Margarita Dissertori, and myself. Uh, okay, so for those of you who might be new to this, uh, this is the regular seminar of IMP, International Association of Mathematical Physics. And if you're interested uh, in joining our mailing list, the information is now on the chat uh, and would be also available in the comments to the video if you're watching this online. Uh, also, it might be worth reading a bit about our association. We are always happy to welcome new members. All right, so let's get started with the talk then. The recording of the talk will be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, but now the floor uh, is given to Michał Brochna, who is going to talk about thermodynamics of quantum fields on rotating black hole space stamps. Michał, it's your time. Please go ahead. Uh, well, thank you. And uh, thank you for uh, all of you for the very, very nice invitation. Uh, it's really uh, it's really a pleasure. Uh, so the topic is indeed about, uh, you know, uh, black holes and thermodynamics and quantum, et cetera. So it's very important to uh, um, to state first uh, what is uh, really the physical regime we are uh, we are talking about here. Um, so we could start by formulating a kind of vague question, perhaps, but uh, you know, of uh, of uh, direct physical relevance, namely, if there is a black hole, it's because uh, it comes from the collapse of uh, um, of a star, and in that process, you could think uh, you can ask what is really uh, the final state emerging from it, so, namely uh, what kind of black holes uh, are predicted by the equations of classical general relativity. That's uh, one type of problem, so closely related to all kind of uh, stability problems for uh, nonlinear uh, PDs. Uh, but then you could also um, ask the same question um, on the level of quantum fields that propagate at the same time on those uh, space times, namely, uh, what is the quantum state that uh, emerged from uh, the black hole collapse? What are its thermodynamic properties and uh, what happens with, uh, with information? And it's uh, the type of questions that you can uh, actually uh, try to study even in models where uh, the black hole spacetime is already fixed and you let uh, you let some quantum degrees of freedom uh, propagate on that spacetime. Uh, and then the symmetries of your problem, uh, they will come from this black hole collapse and you can use those uh, symmetry to, uh, to try to make a kind of uh, guess of when that a uh, final state uh, could be. And um, in the broader context of uh, what we believe should perhaps uh, uh, be true, there is everything that happens on the level of, uh, of quantum gravity, uh, namely uh, the classical laws of uh, black hole thermodynamics uh, have raised the question of uh, whether there exists an underlying statistical, mechanical, microstate uh, interpretation of, of, of that. Um, and it's a whole array of uh, different questions uh, that can be studied in various formulas for quantum gravity. Um, yet, um, many of those questions can be kind of bounced back to uh, this interminal level of quantum field theory on curved space times, where uh, the mathematical rigor uh, that can be achieved is uh, 
perhaps uh, is perhaps more uh, more conclusive. Uh, so that's uh, this very interesting regime in between classical general relativity and really quantum uh, gravity that uh, uh, we are trying to uh, we are trying to to, to study here. So um, in a nutshell, um, you have um, first. Uh, to explain what are those uh, what are those quantum fields? So typically there will be uh, some uh, solution of the hyperbolic uh, partial differential equation. Here I will talk actually mostly about fermions. So it's going to be uh, typically the uh, Dirac equation. Uh, I'm going to talk only about uh, linear fields. Um, and it's not only a solution of uh, a field, it's not only a solution of the Dirac equation, but it has value, some uh, Hilbert space is constructed by some uh, second quantized uh, procedure, uh, which leaves, of course, the ambiguity of choice, which you can trace back to uh, the um, perhaps slightly vague statement that on a curved space time, in general, you don't have a canonical uh, vacuum state. Um, what you have, however, at least are two important guidelines. Uh, first, uh, you have uh, um, a guideline that come from the local um, analysis. Uh, so locally, uh, you'd expect uh, you'd expect that uh, quantum fields uh, do not look very very different from what we know on flat Minkowski space, uh, and in particular, uh, they shouldn't be on small scales uh, more uh, more singular. So in fact, uh, you should have some condition that will say that uh, well they are uh, as smooth as possible, you know, as distributions, uh, depending on point of the space time. And this is a kind of a high frequency uh, condition called the Hadamard condition, which you can write rigorously, for instance, using uh, the language of microanalysis. And secondly, um, in the black hole collapse situation, for instance, uh, you will have particular asymptotic symmetry and these are going to entail you some global conditions uh, that you can read off uh, in the language of scattering theory. They have to do with low frequency analysis. Um, and there are some global aspects that come from the very quantum nature of, uh, of those, um, those fields. So it turns out that when you combine both aspects together, you are actually going to find a situation that uh, differs from uh, the usual flat picture, and that is going to uh, induce quantum effects on on the curved space time, which is uh, why it is uh, interesting to study even uh, linear fields for which there are many uh, interesting phenomena. Uh, so let me try to outline a little bit of uh, the mathematical framework, uh, focusing uh, focusing on the case of uh, uh, fermions. Uh, the advantage is that for fermions, uh, it's uh, easier to make uh, the connection with uh, um, well, the language of uh, unitary evolution, uh, say familiar from uh, from quantum uh, mechanics. And uh, to start things as simple as possible, we can uh, recall the situation for uh, Minkowski space in four dimensions. So the metric is uh, mostly pluses and uh, a minus. Uh, and uh, the Dirac uh, uh, equation on the space time, it's of course uh, the evolution uh, equation uh, generated uh, by the Dirac Hamiltonian, where it is alpha, k, and uh, beta, four by four matrices. Uh, M stands for the mass, and they also can be in general uh, some uh, some potential, right? So it's uh, so it's a self-joint um, operator, and um, uh, there uh, it is uh, well known how uh, to uh, produce uh, free quantum fields out of that. Uh, you have the whole machinery of second quantization. 
uh, which uh, is going to uh, which is going to uh, produce something if you fix uh, a quasi-free uh, state or in an equivalent way um, a density matrix. So there are various levels on which you can do that, and probably the most classical one is to uh, work uh, at uh, time zero. There you have your uh, Hilbert space on which the Hamilton in act, and you have to uh, split your Hilbert space into two parts, which corresponds to particle and anti uh, anti particles. And the canonical choice is to use uh, the spectral uh, projection to the positive uh, and negative part of uh, the spectrum. So assuming, for instance, that you know uh, you don't have any uh, subtleties due to uh, zero uh, eigenvalue. Uh, the choice which corresponds to uh, the vacuum state, uh, it's uh, encoded uh, in this, uh, um, in this uh, operator. Um, and more, uh, more generally, um, a K-mass state at uh, positive uh, temperature, you can also describe it, uh, use it that, uh, that uh, language uh, with the with by replacing this projection uh, by uh, the operator, uh, the operator written in uh, in in here of a very familiar uh, form, uh, which is uh, not a for projection. So uh, actually, on on curved space time, it's uh, um, it's nice to work with uh, uh, the operator, the density matrix, if you like, that is going to correspond to um, uh, to positive frequency, and at the same time, uh, one minus it. Uh, and then the general condition to uh, to have a quasi-free state, you can put it uh, in this nice form that uh, actually you are looking for a pair of uh, operators that are both uh, positive and that. Uh, add up to the identity, and then the pure states they are going to uh, they are going to correspond uh, to uh, projections, and in particular uh, the vacuum state defined as uh, projection. Um, however, um, when you're working on um, space times, uh, if uh, the spatial temporal uh, aspect is uh, is relevant for you, uh, it's um, often better to work in an equivalent way, namely, rather than uh, working on uh, the Hilbert space at time zero, in an equivalent way, you can define a pair of operators that acts on solutions uh, of, the Dirac, uh, of the Dirac equation. And um, in that equivalent language, the vacuum state is going to uh, you can write it as um, as an operator acting on um, uh, finite energy solution um, as uh, the spectral projector uh, of dt acting uh, acting on all those solutions, and in the same way, you can replace you know the the Hamiltonian by uh, by uh, dt uh, in the expression for uh, for uh, thermal uh, states. Of course, this all works because uh, dt, uh, that operator, it's, uh, it commutes with your equation of motions. And this is associated to the fact that, uh, well, d over dt geometrically, it's a, it's a killing vector field for our flat, uh, for our, uh, flat uh, metric. And now the observation is that, um, OK, those various choices, vacuum state, KMS state, they have the same high frequency behaviors. There are many equivalent ways to, uh, to formulate that. But uh, one way of saying this is that uh, if you Fourier transform, uh, it's going to map uh, into, uh, into solutions that have a Fourier uh, transform uh, supported only, uh, um, only on uh, the positive real axis half line or on the negative half line uh, modulo uh, uh, modulo some errors and uh, those errors because it's uh, you only look at what's happening on small scales so uh, uh, you allow for uh, for anything that looks on small scales in uh, you know in 
in a nice way. So you allow here, uh, so you allow here uh, a C infinity, a C infinity error. Okay, so that's um, one way of, uh, of of phrasing it, which uses the symmetries of um, of the problem. Uh, but actually, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, high frequency uh, condition, you can write it in a very very invariant way. Uh, so you can uh, generalize, you know, Dirac operators and make sense of them on curved space times. Um, and you can also generalize this condition, rewrite it in a form that really works uh, without appealing to uh, to any killing um, to any killing uh, vector fields. Uh, thanks to uh, the freedom that you have uh, that you have here on the um, on the right hand uh, on the right hand side. Okay, so uh, that's the Hallermark condition. That's a condition that rough, roughly tells you uh, that uh, uh, the endpoint functions actually, uh, once you second quantize, are going to be as smooth as um, as, as 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 possible. Um, so of course you cannot. Uh, this condition it prevents uh, you from making some very artificial choices. For instance, uh, you could try to uh, associate a kind of vacuum state associated, um, uh, namely um, um, as killing vector fields. You take uh, a spatial derivative. Okay, so it's also going to uh, commute with uh, everything if you were. Uh, if you're in the in the in the flat case and you have no potential, it's at it, etc. Et um, and you can uh, and you can consider uh, a, a state that comes really from you know this uh, um, artificial uh, killing vector field. However, it's going to it's going to break the Hadamard condition. Uh, the Hadamard condition. Um, uh, Tells you something that there is something particular going into in the direction uh, of time, and this is not going to be uh, compatible. Uh, and in general, uh, what happens is that you really have to uh, you really have to uh, pick a time like killing vector field. Okay, so uh, not only d over dt on Minkowski space, but this is something that is going to work. A slightly more generally, if you have a, if you have a space time and you have a time like killing vector field, you can associate a vacuum state, you can associate a, a thermal state, and these are going to be uh, Hadamard states. On the other hand, you should be aware uh, that things uh, will go uh, very, very wrong if you were a vector field, it's not going to be uh, time like. And this, of course, has uh, to do with the analysis on um, on black hole space times. And I'm going to start with uh, the simplest case of non-rotating black hole space times. Uh, it's a model which is uh, somewhat too idealized to, you know, come really from a, a black hole uh, collapse. However, it's well the uh, the one with. Uh, um, Many symmetries, and it's uh, and it's easier to uh, start with. And uh, the uh, the classical, the most classical one is of course uh, Schwarzschild's uh, space time, and uh, it's uh, defined first uh, in um, on R T times uh, some interval times uh, times the two uh, sphere. Uh, you can uh, you can write down uh, the metric uh, the metric ex explicitly, and that's what you call uh, the exterior region. It models you uh, the exterior of the black hole where uh, uh, we are supposed uh, to uh, to live. So have an obvious uh, killing uh, killing vector field uh, d over dt, which is indeed timelike in that uh, in that exterior uh, region. Um, however, it's not the end of the story because uh, you can glue to that the black hole uh, interior uh, by uh, choosing some better coordinates, which are uh, in a way exponential uh, um, um, versions of uh, the t variable. It's not exactly t, but it's t modulo a function of uh, of of r. But uh, in any event, what's going to happen is that uh, this dt is also going to uh, 
uh, to uh, extend across uh, what we call the horizon. Uh, and you can write down uh, the form in those uh, coordinates and uh, check that actually it's not going to be time-like uh, in what we call uh, the black hole, uh, black hole interior. Okay, so that's the picture that uh, that everyone draws. Um, M1, it's uh, the exterior region of uh, the black hole where uh, where we live, and it's a Penrose uh, diagram, meaning that uh, rather than uh, writing, uh, you know, rather than making a drawing of uh, um, of uh, that space and uh, trying to imagine how um, uh, light cones at each point are uh, affected by uh, this particular form of uh, the metric. Rather, uh, you do a drawing where uh, the light cones uh, are arranged, uh, you know, uh, uh, they look like they were in parallel, but on the other hand, it's, uh, you uh, in order to do that, you have to deform the picture. So this is uh, so that's this uh, deformed picture of the exterior region, uh, and uh, glue to it is uh, the interior region, where in addition there's a singular t at uh, r equals as zero. Um, and strictly speaking, it's a conformal rescaled version because to make uh, uh, we want to model. Uh, Infinity away from the black hole uh, in a similar uh, in a similar uh, way as the boundary um, of uh, of a manifold or rather a, a boundary um, a boundary phase and uh, that's so uh, that's what we call a uh, conformal infinity so that's a conformal uh, so that's the conformal future that's the conformal uh, past that's the past horizon of the black hole that's the future. Um, um, that's the future horizon um, of um, of uh, the, the black hole. Uh, so basically, when you live here, you have uh, two possibilities. When you go to the uh, future, either you escape uh, from uh, the black hole or uh, you move towards uh, and uh, you stay in it uh, for for forever. Okay, so that's. Uh, Briefly, uh, the picture disregarding uh, disregarding various uh, issues related with uh, uh, with uh, trapping, and this uh, H uh, minus horizon um, actually in this extended picture uh, it extends to something that uh, I will refer to as uh, the long horizon of uh, of uh, the short this union of the two. Uh, regions of uh, the Schwarzschild uh, space time. Um, okay, so what uh, kind of uh, what kind of quantum states uh, do we have to, for uh, for consideration? Uh, well, uh, we have just said that d over dt uh, is a time-like killing vector field in exterior region. So it seems obvious that uh, a good generalization of the Minkowski vacuum should be uh, the state, uh, which is just the vacuum state with respect to uh, d over t, with respect to translations um, in, in time. Um, however, it turns out uh, that this is not a very, very physical choice because it does not extend uh, smoothly uh, across uh, the future uh, horizon. When I say smoothly, I say smoothly in a Hadamard way. So uh, we are not talking about smooth functions, but we know what it means uh, as smoothly as uh, as possible. So this is not going to uh, so this is not going to happen. So it's not a physical state if you think of uh, if you think of uh, black hole uh, collapse. You'd rather expect that. Uh, a good uh, final state. Uh, it should be at least, uh, you know, well defined and uh, and 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 Hadamard in the union of uh, the interior and the exterior uh, region. Uh, so what you can do, okay, as a next try, um, how about KMS states then? And it's also not going to work. 
uh, except for one particular choice of temperature, uh, which is known as the Hawking temperature, and which uh, is uh, related to uh, to the mass of the black hole. So there is a, so there is a geometrical uh, phenomenon uh, which uh, allows the extension of uh, the state uh, in a Hadamard uh, in a Hadamard way. I will explain you uh, how does it uh, how does it work uh, in uh, uh, very 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 soon. But perhaps uh, we. Uh, what I can do uh, right now is uh, kind of uh, summarize uh, the, the just finish the story of that of that state. So um, the fact that it really extends uh, smoothly, so in a Hadamard way, and that it's well uh, defined really on uh, the whole uh, short field space time. Actually, you can also uh, you can also extend it to further regions, and it's also going to uh, extend it was um, it was achieved by uh, Sanders in the case of uh, bosons and uh, it was actually generalized to other stationary black holes by uh, by Christian uh, by Christian Gérard. that's this um, um, it has this nice feature of course that uh, the Hawking temperature uh, naturally uh, arise and you can uh, one way of Thinking of that is that asymptotically uh, at the past horizon and that the future horizon, you see uh, the Hawking temperature um, um, with respect, of course, to uh, this uh, choice of uh, killing vector field uh, uh, d over dt. Uh, so um, starting from this picture, kind of you can. Uh, argue that it's uh, it's maximally symmetric state on that black hole, so uh, it's the most it's the one uh, which is more likely to to come from uh, from black hole collapse. However, there is uh, there is a small problem with uh, with that, uh, namely uh, if uh, you're considering something that comes from black hole collapse, well. You believe that the collapse happens somewhat uh, uh, somewhere in in the in in, in the past. Uh, so it has uh, there is a situation that has uh, that has set, set, settled down and that has a very particular uh, nice and symmetric asymptotic structure. Uh, whereas in here, um, it seems that. Um, Okay, at the past horizon, indeed, you have a very, very symmetric formula which comes from the right as the good asymptotics, right? Uh, but also, it seems that you are uh, imposing something completely analogous at the um, at the future uh, at the future horizon, and it's a little bit it's a little bit weird. You see uh, uh, here uh, in the in in the Conformal, uh, you are not saying anything about the conformal past, but you are kind of mixing, you know, uh, the future horror information on the future horizon and on the. You are using it simultaneously with the information on asymptotics on uh, um, on the um, uh, past uh, even uh, horizon. So, so it suggests that uh, um, actually it's a bit of an artificial. Uh, choice. Um, oh, excuse me. So, do, yes. do you know that this is the unique state that extends to this whole region, in in certain sense? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. it's, so you don't uh, have to assume that it's a thermal state. I mean, if you only assume that it the state extends all over the whole region smoothly, then you say that you can say that it's a it's a thermal state. Um, so it's it's really a thermal state in the exterior in the exterior region, right? Um, mm -hmm. um, so so of course it comes with uh, with lots of uh, with lots of, uh, of 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 symmetries, and uh, you need um, to have uh, exactly the Hawking temperature uh, to be able. 
uh, to be able to, uh, to, 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 to extend it. So here's, uh, in contrast, a choice which has uh, an asymptotic behavior which looks, uh, which looks more physical. It's called a uh, dual state. And the idea is roughly this. Uh, so we have seen that uh, in the past horizon, it's naturally uh, it's natural to um, find for a state which asymptotically uh, looks like the KMS state at uh, event horizon. On the other hand, we also we don't want to impose a kind of a condition at the, the future uh, horizon, but rather at uh, at uh, past uh, conformal uh, infinity. And at past infinity, uh, you shouldn't really uh, see the Hawking temperature, which really comes from uh, this uh, black hole uh, horizon thing. So uh, a state that has, uh, you know, uh, settled down from this black hole collapse far away from uh, the black hole, the most natural thing will be rather um, a vacuum state uh, with respect to uh, our uh, killing vector field, uh, the over uh, dt. Um, so this has still good chances to extend smoothly because uh, kind of uh, the black hole phenomena are possibly you know this you possibly you have the same geometrical phenomena in a way then for the Hawking uh, Hawking state. Uh, but this is uh, a more difficult uh, question in a sense uh, because uh, um, uh, because now you are forced to use uh, scattering theory uh, at um, uh, in the past of uh, of the black hole to uh, uh, to even uh, to even define the state. So in a sense, it's a mixture uh, of a vacuum state and uh, and of a thermal state. Uh, this mixture is uh, is defined using uh, using scattering theory. And it was uh, proved by the Piaggi Moretti Pinamonti, um, at least for bosons, uh, that indeed it's well defined, and that indeed it extends uh, across the horizon uh, to a well defined uh, Hadamard, uh, Hadamard state. Uh, so this uh, uses actually a lot of arguments from my colloquial analysis. And uh, of course, from uh, from scattering theory here in this case uh, developed by uh, the Fermos and uh, Rodnyansky. So that's the best uh, best candidate for a final state that uh, could arise from collapse. Of course, if you uh, uh, if you forget a little bit about the fact that okay, it's still a non-rotating black hole space time. Uh, so it's uh, difficult a little bit to uh, to imagine how this could really have happened. But this is what uh, the overall asymptotic uh, symmetries of uh, um, of the problem uh, tell you. Um, so what's really important in this kind of problems, if you want to uh, if you want to extend, you have to uh, you have to uh, understand. Um, how is it possible that uh, the asymptotic data of your solution of uh, of your state uh, they extend on uh, the long horizon, and why do they give uh, the Hawking temperature? So at least uh, that's one part of this uh, big puzzle that's relatively simple to understand. Is a and is a really uh, remarkable uh, phenomenon. Uh, so the emergence of the Hawking temperature, it always amounts, in fact, to a kind of uh, computation uh, which is uh, analogous to uh, that one. Uh, so it's, it's really sufficient to uh, understand it on uh, in one dimension and on a very, very simple time model. So uh, the story goes like this. Uh, you uh, look at the operator uh, i times uh, d over dx on uh, L2 on a whole uh, real line. And then, well, it's a self-adjoint operator. You can take the spectral projection on uh, the um, positive uh, on the positive half line. Uh, but then, what you can do afterwards 
is that you can restrict that operator uh, to uh, functions uh, on um, on the positive half line um, uh, considered, uh, you know, considered as another as another uh, Hilbert space. On the other hand, on the half line, you have um, another natural operator, uh, which is the generator of uh, of dilation, right? Um, so this generator of dilations, it doesn't have much to do with uh, the over uh, dx. Of course, they uh, they do not commute. Uh, so you do not expect in general uh, that if you take a function of the over dx and a function of that generator of uh, dilations, you will find anything, uh, you know, any interesting, uh, any interest uh, in identity. However, it turns out that this spectral projection is a little bit special. Um, if you look at the Schwartz kernel, it actually uh, has the good homogeneities, uh, and it's going to be precisely equal uh, to uh, some function of that uh, generator uh, of dilation. And that function is exactly uh, the function with the exponential which you uh, which you know from the definition of uh, um, of a thermal state. Um, so this is a this is a story that uh, you can uh, you can retell in uh, the black hole horizon context. So in our uh, in our situation, uh, that implies that if you take um, the spectral projection for d over du, so where u is uh, is this uh, is this coordinate that uh, that lives on the horizon. So uh, recall uh, that to uh, do the black hole extension, you have to introduce those uh, the special the special coordinates, and um, uh, there's uh, this uh, horizon in here. Uh, it's going to be equal to capital V equals to zero. So there are the natural coordinates uh, living on this. It's um, it's um, um, it's capital U. And D over D U is a kind of uh, you know symmetry of that horizon, if you um, if you like. Um, so if you think in terms of asymptotic data at uh, the on the long horizon, uh, then you have an obvious symmetry and a kind of uh, and a kind of you know asymptotic vacuum state. And that asymptotic vacuum state, if you restrict it to the half line, meaning just uh, you know uh, half of the horizon, which is uh, the pass horizon, uh, then it's it is going to restrict to a formal state uh, for uh, the vector field uh, for vector field proportional to uh, the generator uh, to the generator of, uh, of of dilations and actually is going to be our uh, killing uh, vector field the d over dt in those weird uh, coordinates. Uh, so uh, this is uh, in terms of uh, asymptotic data. This is uh, um, uh, this is what is called a K and the world uh, vacuum state. And uh, this uh, very simple, uh, this very simple um, observation, um, and uh, of course, the special uh, forms of those uh, coordinates, uh, they, uh, they imply that uh, the restriction of something that looks like a kind of vacuum uh, actually, it restricts to uh, to to formal state. So uh, that's always uh, that's always uh, what's uh, what's un underneath um, what's underneath those extension uh, phenomena. Um, and then the whole problem is that, of course, uh, it's just a fen asymptotic phenomenon. And then we need to uh, we need uh, to have a well uh, developed scattering theory uh, to uh, transport. Uh, all this uh, to uh, to finite um, times, and since uh, become quite uh, tricky if uh, you uh, consider 
uh, the more realistic case of uh, rotating black hole space times. And here is, uh, you know, the most uh, famous example, uh, uh, space time. You start uh, just as uh, before uh, with writing in uh, an explicit form for uh, the metric in the exterior of, uh, um, of the black hole. So it's a significantly more com complicated uh, expression uh, where you have, in addition to the black hole uh, mass parameter, a rotation parameter uh, A, and you can uh, as you can see that as A goes uh, to zero, you recover you recover the uh, the expression for uh, the Schwarzschild uh, metric. What's interesting is perhaps uh, not so much the particular form of that metric, but uh, first of all uh, the fact that um, it has a killing vector field, which is d over uh, dt. However, once you uh, start computing things a little bit, uh, you realize that actually d over dt uh, is not uh, everywhere time-like in the exterior uh, in the exterior region. And you'd think, okay, perhaps I can try uh, I can try with some uh, other uh, killing vector fields. Actually, what you can is that you can consider linear combinations with uh, d over d phi, and there is uh, another uh, killing vector field uh, which uh, happens uh, to be timelike also in a kind of big region, but it's also not everywhere uh, timelike. So um, it means that you cannot just uh, you know start with. Uh, uh, thermal state at Hawking temperature um, because it's not going to be it's not going to be a Hanamard state and um, you cannot take that one you cannot take uh, that one and that's the reason in a nutshell uh, why we don't have a good uh, notion of uh, horror Hawking state this is a bit Awkward because um, the Hartnell Hawking state is what uh, uh, physicists use um, when uh, studying um, the relationship with uh, black hole thermodynamics with some more informational theoretical things, for instance. So that's always uh, the most symmetric, uh, the most symmetric state, um, and the most obvious one in a sense. And yet, if you uh, have uh, even a very small rotation uh, parameter, uh, then uh, we do not really know if there is a kind of a reasonable replacement um, of, that, um, of that state. Um, so, uh, there are many non-existent theorems, actually, which I'll also uh, mention uh, later on, uh, but uh, we have actually no clue uh, about some uh, good replacement of the Harl uh, Hawking uh, state. Um, well, still you can ask the question: uh, How about uh, the Unho state? Um, and then um, uh, one obvious question is, okay, which uh, killing vector field are you going to take and whether it's going to be, uh, whether it's going to be a problem for the whole construction um, or, um, um, or, or, or not. So um, what happens is that uh, this whole uh, black hole um, extension procedure, right? If you want to change coordinates in a way that you're uh, be able to extend the metric and uh, and write down an expression for the metric uh, and that's also uh, valid in what we will call the black hole interior uh, uh, region. Um, then uh, the vector fields in those uh, coordinates would look like uh, will look like like that. So it's uh, so these are all formulas which are very similar to to Schwarzschild except that one is going to play the role of an asymptotic symmetry for, uh, uh, for uh, the horizon and the other one for, uh, for past infinity. And actually uh, one of them, due to the rotation of the black hole, uh, you have one killing vector field, which is more 
uh, which is more uh, natural at the horizon, and the other one at conformal, uh, at conformal um, in, in, in infinity. Uh, so um, other than that, the picture um, is um, almost the same. So uh, there, this nature of uh, the r equals zero singularity is uh, is quite it's quite uh, different, but that's uh, not uh, the, the the main aspect uh, which I'm interested um, in um, in in here. Um, Um, on the other hand, I still need uh, I still need the scattering uh, I still need the scattering theory. Um, so um, in joint work with uh, Dietrich Hefner and Christian uh, Gerard, we've considered massless fermions uh, mostly uh, because there was already a scattering uh, theory result uh, by uh, by Jean Philippe Nicolas and uh, and Dietrich Hefner from two thousand. Uh, from 2004, um, and as most of uh, results in uh, scattering theory on black holes, it uh, it works for um, uh, the data on the past horizon and on um, past infinity. So you have like two pieces of uh, uh, of scattering data. Uh, however, it turns out that it's possible. Uh, to uh, also have a scattering theory uh, in the union of uh, the interior region and the exterior uh, region, um, as to rather have uh, uh, asymptotic data um, at the union of uh, the long horizon and of uh, conformal uh, conformal um, uh, in infinity. Okay, so with um, the specific symmetries of the horizons here, uh, where you have to be a little bit uh, careful about making the, the good choices. Um, well, what seems to be the most, uh, the most natural is to take uh, a generalization of that k world uh, vacuum uh, from the Schwarzschild uh, setting on the long horizon and an asymptotic vacuum here for the natural time uh, variable uh, on uh, um, on past uh, uh, on past infinity on conformal past uh, um, in, in, in infinity. Um, so that's in a way the main uh, the main result um, I'd like to to present in this uh, in this uh, talk. Uh, we know that in this way uh, we are going to get uh, a well-defined and uh, pure state actually, which really deserves uh, the name of uh, uh, UNRO state, which has all uh, the properties uh, um, uh, required for such a state. Uh, that's the most natural state in terms of uh, being the final state uh, um, arising from black hole collapse in this uh, still slightly idealized situation. And we are able to, uh, to prove the Hadamard uh, condition, uh, at least for a sufficiently small um, angular uh, momentum. So uh, the, um, the black hole uh, needs to be rotating not, uh, not uh, too fast. So indeed, uh, it is asymptotically uh, thermal. And what's interesting is that uh, it's no longer, you know, the mixture. I mean, if you say it's the mixture of uh, came as a state and of a vacuum uh, state, uh, you would be disregarding the fact that these are uh, thermal or um, or uh, or vacuum with respect to different uh, killing vector fields. So with respect to different uh, time translation. So uh, th this is actually what, uh, uh, what, makes, uh, what makes the proof, uh, the proof uh, difficult. Uh, working with uh, this weird mixture, uh, which is defined really using, uh, using uh, scattering. There are a few, uh, a a few re remarks. So uh, 
if, if you'd like, it's, uh, it's a fully rigorous uh, a version of uh, a construction which has earlier uh, um, performed really uh, mode by mode. So there is a separation of variables, and then you can uh, and then you can uh, consider a simplified version um, of um, of the problem. Another remark is that uh, d over d u is not a killing uh, vector uh, vector field. So it's uh, so it's extremely uh, weird at first that uh, the most natural vacuum in the situation, if you like, uh, it's actually obtained using something that does not have the interpretation uh, of a killing vector field in that space time. Uh, so dilations with respect to uh, you generators of dilations, they are related to, to killing vector fields or are killing the vector fields. But d over du, uh, it, uh, uh, it, it, it arises uh, in a bit uh, weird way, uh, but still it's uh, the only reasonable uh, choice uh, if you impose the Hadamard conditions and uh, you respect uh, the symmetries um, of the problem. And other remark, the small a assumption it's related to issues with uh, trapped null geodesics. I told you that uh, um, um, as a particle or say ray of light, you can uh, either enter the black hole or you can um, escape it, but also uh, there is a kind of uh, trapping that, roughly speaking, uh, leaves you asymptotically to uh, uh, to that uh, strange point uh, in, in in here, and this is extremely uh, it's extremely difficult uh, to um, uh, to understand the contributions uh, um, from that type of uh, of null um, of null. Um, uh, geodesics. So now, in, in the more uh, in a more broad uh, pictures so of the technical aspects, uh, they are um, made difficult by the fact that you have to control some C infinity uh, regularity in a sense. Okay, micro local C infinity regularity, but uh, but still from asymptotic data, and uh, usually a scattering theory is going to uh, is going to con be constructed in some uh, in some Hilbert space, uh, in some Hilbert space formalism, uh, say in some L2 setting or using some energy estimates, uh, et cetera. And it's far from, uh, from evident how uh, this type of uh, operators, uh, scattering operators obtained as limits in uh, some uh, in some Hilbert spaces, uh, how do they know something about uh, the infinity uh, regularity? So that's a problem which has the uh, which has a, a long uh, history in various settings. Uh, so asymptotically Minkowski, the Stitcher, asymptotically uh, static, uh, etc. On non-rotating black hole space times, I should also uh, uh, point out uh, the works of uh, Holland, uh, Wald, and Tan about the Unohu state for bosons on Reisner Nordstrom deciduous space time, especially that they are able to, uh, uh, to go as far as uh, the Cauchy horizon um, and, um, and argue that you have really bad singularities of, uh, those, um, uh, of those quantum states at the Cauchy horizon, so it's uh, a kind of uh, quantum instability mechanism for uh, for the Cauchy uh, horizon, and this uh, uses results by Hintz and uh, Vashi. Um, on uh, rotating black hole space times, well, the story is a bit uh, new, so it's not that new if you uh, think of non-existence theorems. Uh, the classical results uh, were obtained by Kay and Walt, uh, and more recent ones by Pinamonti, Sanders, and uh, Fers. Um, and uh, while our work uh, um, considers uh, the case of uh, fermions uh, on Kerr, uh, there are also new brilliant results by Christian Klein, 
which solves the case of bosons on Kerr, uh, the Sitter space, also using uh, uh, various uh, relatively uh, recent results by uh, by Hintz and and uh, Vashi. So that's the beginning of the story. If you would like to talk, for instance, about uh, the Hawking effect, so uh, there are many uh, works um, on this. So rigorously, um, um, in particular by Dietrich uh, Hefner. Right, so um, as an outlook, uh, um, the main results here was that for massless Dirac fields and slowly rotating curve, we have shown that asymptotic symmetries from black hole collapse and the Hadamard extendability, well, they, uh, um, they lead you to, uh, uh, to, to, to think that this final state, this UNRO state, um, is, con is um, constructed in a way which I've shown you and which has a clear, you know, half Hawking temperature uh, interpretation. Um, so with um, um, a, a very uh, a very rich uh, model, uh, model uh, if you if you want to say things about uh, you know information theoretical properties of uh, this type of um, of uh, systems. Actually, the analogous uh, problem for uh, for bosons is much more uh, much more difficult, um, but um, in any event, uh, it um, boils down to having an, a sufficiently efficient uh, scattering theory, which will allow you to control those uh, uh, C infinity properties of uh, of fields, and uh, there is. Um, um, a lot and a lot of uh, new developments in that uh, in that field, uh, which combines scattering theory and my colloquial uh, analysis. I've mentioned only uh, a very very few, uh, so um, I think that there is a reasonable hope that uh, one could uh, answer uh, this question uh, conjecturally in a, in a positive uh, way. Um, Right, so that's basically it, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Michal. Uh, this was a very nice talk. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, are there any questions? The floor is open for questions. You can just go ahead and unmute yourself if you have questions. Uh, may I have a question? Of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, is this state uh, uniquely defined? So there are no um, uh, uh, arbitrary choices in this state. Uh, it's uh, it's indeed uniquely it's indeed uniquely defined, and uh, it's important that it's a pure state that uh, this there is nothing lost from going from asymptotic data to finite times using uh, scattering theory. Uh, so so uh, what is the problem with a positive mass? Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, why, why is it more difficult? Uh, is it more difficult to prove that it is Radamard or what? what is the difficulty? It's indeed more difficult to prove that it is uh, Hadamard. Um, it's because in the massless case, we can use some conformal methods uh, where um, the data at, uh, at past infinity, you interpret it uh, in, a geometrical, uh, in a geometrical way in terms of a characteristic Cauchy problem. Um, and that's the type of uh, things that uh, help you on the technical uh, level. On the other yeah. hand, if you are in the massive case, you can you can um, no longer rely on such techniques, and you have to um, treat very very seriously the fact that your scattering operators are really defined, uh, you know, using scattering theory in in Hilbert's uh, in Hilbert's spaces, and yeah, so, uh, so so far 
uh, we are able to to um, develop arguments uh, that allow to control C infinity regularity using scattering theory just on asymptotically static space times, where in a sense you have one kind of asymptotics. But here it's more uh, it's more difficult because you have uh, uh, you have this uh, asymptotic splitting in a way uh, into two parts of uh, of, of of data. Um, and uh, we do not know how to do it yet for uh, uh, realistic black hole spacetimes. But uh, so uh, forgetting about the Hadamardness, uh, do you have uh, a candidate, a unique candidate for uh, for the two point function of this state? Or um, so on a formal level, do you have a candidate? Yes, definitely. Yes, it's also going to be this. Uh, uh, the scale walled vacuum and an asymptotic uh, and an asymptotic vacuum. So it's clear what are the asymptotic data. It's just not clear what uh, uh, what does um, the scattering theory produce in terms of how the state is going to look uh, locally. But there is uh, there is definitely a, um, a canonical. Uh, state uh, which you can uh, which you can study and which you can call a uh, dunal state yeah so 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 there is a state but maybe it is not hard amart exactly mm -hmm. exactly okay thank you okay uh, any more questions so so I, I have a quick question as well since you're on this page. Uh, you mentioned information theoretical properties. So, are, are you talking about this idea that you know the information paradox could be solved by the fact that you have those asymptotic charges from asymptotic symmetries, or what well, is is that somewhat related to this idea? Um, so, um, I don't know precisely what you're uh, what you're re referring to but there is there is uh, this, the, this the idea board. that um yeah uh the asymptotic symmetries lead to asymptotic charges and they are somehow related to to uh the soft photon theorem and so on uh so but the this is like one of the recent proposals to address the black hole information paradox. But that's not what you're talking about when you're talking about information theoretical properties. Right. So uh, the question is the question is very uh, very broad. Namely, uh -huh. uh, you have some formal uh, laws of uh, black hole thermodynamics, which are essentially classical, and you would like to to know whether they have a, a really uh, an interpretation from some microsystems uh, that will allow to to say, okay, this is really thermodynamics. There is really some. Uh, so it's called uh, me mechanics. And uh, what seems to be uh, the most uh, plausible um, in this um, in this setting is that uh, the kind of um, entropies that uh, ar arise here are more information theoretical uh, entropies rather than, a statistical uh, mechanical ones, and um, uh, well, one can uh, try to one can try to 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 test that uh, that idea by uh, computing those uh, those those entropies uh, by using the language of information uh, theory. On the other uh, on the other hand, um, and uh, the, perhaps the problem is that very often. Uh, these identities they rely very very much on on, on symmetry so mm -hmm. you have uh, an abundance of ideas uh, and it's difficult to 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 sometimes to 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 de define decide between them um, no. because there are so so many uh, so many miracles but on rotating black hole space times you have a much um, a richer structure and no. Um, and it's uh, and it's a model on which you can uh, test a lot of those ideas 
um, regardless of uh, well the details of uh, which framework you are or which ideas uh, uh, about uh, the black hole information paradox you're coming with. I see. So, so you're saying that actually people should you know look at this example and try try it out and see if you know these ideas make sense in that particular case because it's somewhat uh, more rigid or uh, yes 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 uh, so, so so definitely right right now we know quite uh, to do how to do a lot of things on uh, on, on rotating black hole space times and uh, this is indeed a, a framework where you have a kind of a more more rigidity and uh, uh, where you can test all, all this kind of uh, ideas. Nice. Um, okay, and any more questions? Okay, let, let me have another <laughs> short question. So uh, what about gauge theories? Would, how would things change if I wanted to construct states for like electromagnetism or uh, linearized young mills or I don't know my favorite linearized gravity <laughs> uh, right so that's a um, that's a very good question and one that gives you even more uh, uh, rigidity in terms of the techniques that are allowed for 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 instance um, so um, Gauge theories are more difficult in that it's more difficult to develop the scattering theory mm -hmm. um, because um, in a way you have much less positivity. Positivity happens, but only on the physical space, and it's the very often difficult to, uh, to control that. Um, and... Um, all the things that use uh, that use positivity in this analysis become uh, become much harder. That's one thing. And the other hand is how gauge conditions behave oh. at uh, at horizons. Uh, how mm. are they reflected in terms of asymptotic data? And it turns out, in particular, for linearized gravity, that there are some very very bad things uh, going going on. So everybody believes that okay it should still you know work on uh for linearized gravity um it's etc but it's extremely difficult to uh to prove um to, to, to prove in anything and um uh sometimes you get just baffled by how a miracle is this is that <laughs> gauge theories uh, work work indeed even uh, even in those settings. Uh, but um, people are, are really uh, interested in developing mm -hmm. uh, gauge, uh, a scattering theory for, for gauge theories, especially because of linearized gravity, uh, yeah. in light of advances uh, related to uh, black hole nonlinear uh, stability. This, mm -hmm. The techniques come hand in hand with those uh, stability problems, and uh, that's why we, uh, we expect some well, um, good developments in the near future. Exciting. All right. Uh, OK, so um, if, let's see. Are there any more questions at the moment? OK, so I think I can close the official part of uh, the seminar. So thank you very much, Michal, again, for a nice talk. <laughs>